Hey everybody, this is Dr. Daniel Choi from North Texas Dental Surgery, Wisdom Teeth and Denture Implant Center. And I wanted to take the opportunity to create a learning opportunity. Um, a patient came into my office about an hour ago for a consultation. She's having an issue with significant bone loss on two of her front teeth and she wanted to know what her options were in regards to dental implants. And so I'll be going over this case with you guys to kind of help teach you guys in regards to like if you ever have bone loss on one of your front teeth or you're experiencing bone loss and you want to consider like having a dental implant in the future um, or what your options are dental implants bridge what might be the best one I wanted to kind of um, put a little information out there so you guys will kind of know kind of like you know what your option your treatment options are and what our thought process is in regards to doing these um, these cases so here's our patient she um, came in to us found us um, on the internet and um, she's having bone loss on these two teeth. Now, one reason I could even tell just by, you know, looking at this photo is, look at the gums between these teeth, right? So look at how the gum here um, is receded versus like the gum that would be um, on the other side. Um, obviously there's a lack of symmetry because uh, what we discover when we look at the x-rays is that there's a significant amount of bone loss going on right there. Now, your gums are only going to be supported up to, you know, a few millimeters past where your, your, your bone is supporting the teeth. Now, what do I mean by that? I tell people, listen, like imagine an old school tent. The tent is supported, the fabric is supported by the posts. If I shorten the pole or the post, then the fabric's going to come lower with it. Similarly, the our bone, our jawbone supports the papilla, the, gum, the piece of gum between our teeth. And so therefore, if we lose bone, your gums will shrink back behind it, right? And so that's a critical like point in regards to like aesthetics with dental implants, especially your front implants, because if we lose bone over the years, then that's going to compromise our aesthetics. And when it comes to aesthetics, people think it's all about just the shape of the tooth or the crown veneers. That's how we get an ideal aesthetic result. But no, it's actually the shape of the gums too. And because it's a shape of the gums that affect your aesthetics, then it's also your bone underneath behind the scenes that supports the gum. That's also very critical for us to achieve ideal aesthetic results when we're dealing with these anterior aesthetic implants. So let's take a quick look at her, her x-rays. Here's her mouth. Uh, we see these two corresponding teeth. You do see some, uh, these teeth had been root canaled. Um, she also mentioned a history of um, some dentists had used a laser and I guess um, caused damage to the pulp of the teeth, the nerves of the teeth, and therefore she needed root canal afterwards. But you could see um, just a, I mean, significant amount of bone loss going on right here, right? Um, when we compare to the contralateral side here, you have good interproximal bone right here supporting the peaks of gum, which we call the papilla, but we just have... I mean, just an, a devastating amount of bone loss going on here. Um, and then when we look at the, the scan here, we could see that I know like it's to the untrained eye, it's hard for you guys to see what we're looking at, but we just see what we call facial bone loss, loss of bone on the outer edge. And just kind of when you get into the in-between area, just a significant amount of bone loss. You know, we should see bone up around here. Instead, we see it down here. And so... You know, the body is actually pretty amazing that even when you lose bone, your gum doesn't shrink back that much until um, we do a surgical procedure. Let's say we had to like get in underneath the gums. And once you just disturb that area of the gums in the first place, your gums just have a tendency to want to shrink back because they have the gums have an attachment to the teeth. But when you sever that attachment and the bone is already sitting real low, then your gums are going to recede real low as a result. So um, what are our options here, right? So dental implants, I told her, listen, if we do dental implants, I mean, you know, there's going to be a lot of work involved. What we would have to do is we'd take out those two teeth. Well, actually, let me take a step back. She came and said, hey, I'm losing some bone. Simple. Just do a bone graft, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not simple. And in the case of these root canal teeth, we're not going to be able to just go ahead and build bone around that. It just, it just doesn't work like that. Um, and even if we are looking at doing bone grafting, bone grafting can only be done in areas which have lost bone in a certain type of pattern. Um, are we filling something that's a pattern of like a pothole versus something that's just ramped off for just what we call horizontal bone loss? Um, horizontal bone loss is not a graftable defect, right? So 
Um, although we could do amazing things due to modern science and medicine and bone grafting is awesome, um, there are just not, you know, like not everything is equal in regards to us getting you a, a beautiful ideal result. So option number one, can we just add bone graft to that area? Not possible. So if we did want to basically address this and we'd say, okay, well, unfortunately those two teeth, they just got to go, right? Um, well, great. Well, if we, those two teeth come out, what are we going to do? Well, there's going to be a significant bony defect in that area. So even if she wanted to do a bridge, which is basically shaving down the adjacent teeth and putting um, several fake teeth there, um, there would be a collapse of bone in that area. So we would still, after the teeth are taken out, we would still grab, do a bone graft in that area and build up that bone. Um, she was asking, well, you said you can't bone graft it when the teeth are there. I was like, yeah, unfortunately with the teeth having lost so much bone, not having the pattern that would be amenable to bone graft and also those two teeth having been root canal and not being vital anymore, you know, alive anymore, we couldn't bone graft it, but we could take the teeth out and we can build the bone up with a procedure called guided bone regeneration. Now, guided bone regeneration is definitely a more invasive procedure. There's definitely more added expense, added more time. So it's not something that we ideally want to do, but it would be a necessary evil, right? And so we could build up the bone, again, wait six months, um, then place two dental implants in the area, let that heal for about another four months, and then we can begin a process of provisionalizing the teeth, meaning um, you know, putting temporary crowns on the teeth to basically mold the gums. Remember I was saying at the beginning of the video, it's very important that we mold the gums properly um, in order for you to have an ideal result. Again, the shape of the gums. So we can alter the shape of the gums by, um, you know, putting like temporary crowns on those dental implants. One thing that we understand about aesthetics is that symmetry is important, right? So you want, um, let me take a look at this. You want to make sure that we have symmetrical, like, you know, the teeth, right? So canine and canine, do the gums look similar? Are they pointy the same? Are they similar length? Um, there are certain aspects of symmetry that we want to make sure, like, you know, Obviously, we don't want to make sure, like, like, you know, have one eyeball higher than the other or anything like that. So with teeth, when it comes to aesthetics, you know, you want to have symmetry. So we want to make sure that the gums are properly um, shaped and, you know, like they look, you know, good in regards to the contralateral side. So that's just something that if she wanted to go down the, the dental implant avenue, um, there would, again, be extensive work involved. And also to maintain symmetry, and to also maintain the contacts, the shape of the gums, all that stuff. Another thing that we would have to do, and I know this video is getting a little complicated, but we would have to potentially put new crowns on some of these other teeth because when we start altering the shape of the gums, the teeth are going to start looking more squarish, um, having their contact point higher to mask this issue with the gum. Um, and because if I would be doing that on one side with the new crown here and here, I'm going to be able to have to establish symmetry by putting a new crown here and here. So, and maybe even doing a new crown here and a new crown here. So, I, you know, I, I completely understand where a patient's coming from. They're like, oh my God, I just came in here for a bone grafting console. Now you're telling me I need a crown from canine to canine. I'm going to have to do guided bone regeneration, six months of healing time, placing two implants, doing maybe a gum graft, maybe doing... Um, temporary crowns and then you know all these other crowns like oh my god like what are you doing are you trying to rip me off no it's just unfortunately when we have a significant amount of bone loss going on in that area um, that's just the you know in order to make things look as aesthetic as possible um, these are some of the things that we'd have to be looking at now is this the case for every patient no I really don't think so if you're elderly, um, you know, like when you smile, you know, your lips don't come up too high over your teeth. And so I can't see your gums. What does it matter if, uh, um, you know, there, there's a, a little void up here, right? So if her gums only came up to here, right, um, and I don't see all this, then all this, this, this black triangle, this lack of symmetry, the way that these teeth are meeting up there, that's not a concern. So... We could save a hell of a lot of money by just building up the bone, placing a few implants, and not worrying, not having to shave down additional teeth. So that's basically what I would say if this patient was in their 50s, 60s, even 30s, 40s, and they have a low smile line, don't worry about it. You could save yourself a ton of money. You can save yourself 
um, all that grief. You can do dental implants. Dental implants are great. Why do a bridge and shave down like you know perfectly healthy adjacent teeth? But in the case like this where she has a high smile line, the more predictable result, the way less cost would be potentially a bridge or the downsides of a bridge. Again, you're shaving down adjacent teeth. How long is a bridge going to last? Maybe it lasts five years, maybe it lasts 15 years, maybe it lasts 20 years, maybe it lasts two years. We have no idea, right? But when those teeth that were shaved down, when they have to go, then now you have a multi-tooth problem, which can definitely be more added expense, right? So um, I know this is a, a very convoluted video in regards to kind of like what all your options are, but hopefully this information is, will be helpful for you guys if you're ever caught in a situation where you have a front tooth that's got bone loss. They're telling you, you know, you might need some guided bone regeneration, a lot of bone grafting and you know what might happen but i'll tell you another thing that hopefully this information will be helpful for you guys too is that if somebody tells you in a case like this where you have a front teeth high smile line you got a lot of bone loss and they're telling you that you could just get away with a normal bone graft without guided bone generation regeneration run also the people that are most uh, likely going to be able to take care of a bone grafting procedure for you on a case like this is going to be oral surgeons and periodontists um no offense to all the general dentists out there, but I don't think most of them have the experience doing the guided bone regeneration that uh, would be necessary in a case like this. Um, obviously, there's exceptions to the rule, so I don't want to make a blanket statement like that. But, um, you know, your oral surgeons and periodontists are going to be the ones that have more extensive training. And then your periodontists are going to be your oral plastic surgeons who are more trained in the cosmetics. So definitely be looking for some of those guys. Um, Hopefully you guys found this information helpful. Please give us a follow. Give me a comment on the bottom if you have any questions. Uh, give us a like on the video. Hopefully this information was helpful for you guys. And if you have any others, please let me know. Thank you. And give us a follow on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. Um, our handle is North Texas Dental Surgery. Appreciate it. Thanks.